take to fix it? Well, like I told you, the bearings burned out and cracked the block. How long will it take? It's gonna send to Los Angeles for a new block. Take about a week. Yeah. About a week, huh? Uh huh. What did you give me for it? Well, with a burnt bearing, about two hundred and eighty dollars. You kidding? Uh -uh. I paid eighty bucks for the tires alone. They're practically new. Uh, so you did. Okay, tell you what I'll do. I'll give you three hundred and eighty dollars for the whole shebang and throw in the towing charge. Four hundred. Uh uh. Three eighty. Four hundred. Got the pink slip? Yeah. Okay, 400. All right, there be anything else? Nope. Get you the dough. It keeps heating up. Lady, you think you got trouble? This thing won't even run. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were the mechanic. Well, I'll speak to my tailor about that when I get back in town. Here's your man now. Your fan belt is broken. Would that make it boil? Yes, ma'am. Especially if you've been driving pretty fast. Well, tell me, do you have some maps of California or Arizona? Sorry, miss, we have California, but nothing east of here. Try the gas station next door. Uh, excuse me, miss, but I've got some maps if you're welcome to. Thank you. Here you are, miss. A complete file. All the western states. I won't need them anymore. That's very kind of you. Not at all. Hey, I son, four hundred dollars. All right. Say, uh, tell me something. Where do the eastbound buses stop going through here? Uh, it's Parsons Restaurant next to the filling station. There's one due about nine o'clock. How's the food in there? Good. All right, thanks. I'll uh, I'll pick up my gear later, huh? Thanks. Oh, uh, have a nice trip, Miss. I'll see you later. Thank you. say you were traveling east. I know your car broke down and you were going to take a bus. That's right. Well, I'm going that way, too. Oh? Santa Fe, New Mexico, is, is that on your way? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, it is. You, uh, you'd like a traveling companion, is that it? Well, not exactly, Mr. Emmett. I want someone to help me drive. You see, it's of great importance that I get to Santa Fe as soon as possible. It occurred to me that if I drove by day, and I had somebody who could drive by night, I'd get there much faster. Non stop all the way? That's right. I know how you must feel being approached by a perfect stranger. But if you would like to join me, it would be strictly business. <laughs> you make it sound pretty dull. But I, uh, I think I'll accept your offer, Miss Nicholson. Mrs. Mrs. Nicholson. Mrs. Nicholson. I knew it. It just had to be. But it's a deal, Mrs. Nicholson. Say, you really are in a hurry, huh? 
don't you? I told you that was part of the bargain. Yeah. All right, I was only kidding. Tell me, are there any uh, rivers or lakes near Santa Fe? I really couldn't say. I've never been here before. Why? Well, I got a month's vacation. I'm going back to Texas to see my folks, and I thought maybe that going and coming, I'd get in a little fishing, maybe hunting. It's coincidence. You might say I'm going hunting. Yeah, in Santa Fe? What's the season this time of year? Just a figure of speech, Mr. Emmett. I'm hunting for a man. Oh. Well, I guess maybe men are always in season, huh? Uh, Mr. Emmett, uh, don't you think you ought to get some rest? You're going to be driving all night. Maybe you're right. Something wrong? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just that I... I'm getting a little tired. Would you mind taking over now? <sighs> no, not at all. I'm getting a little headache. I'm glad you decided to join me. Maybe I can get some sleep. All right. Use that for a pillow. Okay. Midnight. Say, I um, think I'll get a cup of coffee. Could I get you one? That'd be wonderful, thanks. Uh, how about a donut? Fine. Uh, look, here, you, you better take this. Hey, uh, you better put that away. That's quite a roll of money. Well, you need it for gas and coffee. No, thanks. Forget it. This one's on me. You can get it next time. You better look under the hood. chance to talk to you uh, alone. What about? Well, the booth would be a little more private. Do you mind? No, not at all. My name is Helen Bethke. Well, go on, take a look. Oh, you're a registered nurse. Yes. And Mrs. Nicholson is my patient. Your patient? What's the matter with her? Anything else, sir? Uh, you want something to eat? No, thank you. No, thanks. Oh, it's nothing too serious. She's had a nervous breakdown, and she's presently under treatment. Oh, she's making excellent progress. Is all this a polite way of saying that the lady's a little, uh... Oh, no, no. She's perfectly harmless and almost well now. But a doctor thinks she needs to get off by herself, be a little bit independent. So when she ran away today, he wanted me to follow her, but only to see that she kept out of trouble. That's why I've taken the precaution of approaching you. Hmm. I suppose uh, now you want to check on my credentials, huh? Well, I do have to make sure that a traveling companion is reliable, shall we say, uh, can be trusted. That's 
Suppose I don't, uh, don't pass your little test. Well, let's say if you do pass, you simply continue on as you have. You see, the garage man told me you needed a ride. I'll tell you what let's do, huh? You get in the car and ride with Mrs. Nicholson, and I'll uh, drive your car and meet you in Santa Fe. Now, how's that? Santa Fe, is it? Yeah. Well, I've told you why I can't go with her. The doctor thinks she should be on her own. You won't regret this, Mr. Emmett. Oh, by the way, don't insist on paying for things. You see, the widow Nicholson is a very wealthy woman. The executor of her husband's estate will be glad to pay you for your help. Well, maybe we can talk about that later, huh? Fine. Then you call me in Santa Fe. I'll go on ahead and make sure someone takes care of her after that. Whereabouts in Santa Fe? <laughs> that is a thought, isn't it? Well, here, let me see. Here we are, Santa Fe. Estes Hotel. You can reach me there. Going to do it, Doctor. I thought you could persuade him better than I. Did you find out where she's going? Yes. Santa Fe. Good for you. Uh, Mrs. Nicholson, I, uh, I have your, your coffee and donut here. What took you so long? Oh, I uh, stopped for a hamburger. That's three ninety, you owe me. Yeah. Here, uh, five dollars. Three ninety, four, five. Thanks a lot. What did Miss Bethke tell you about me? You were supposed to be asleep. Did she tell you I was sick or mentally incompetent or something like that? Oh, no, no, no. She just asked me to be nice to you and see that you get to Santa Fe. That's very sweet of her. Well, I've changed my mind, Mr. Emmett. I don't think I'll need your help anymore. Oh, well, this is a fine time for you to decide that. I want you to get out of the car right now. What? Right out here in the middle of nowhere? Look, Mrs. Nicholson, if you think you're going to dump me like that, why, maybe you are out of your mind. Well, maybe this will shorten the distance to the next town. Yeah, well, maybe you better just put that back like I told you once before. Say, what's going on here anyway? First this Miss Bethke and now you. Did she offer you money? Yeah, yeah, she did. But her deal was COD, Santa Fe, with your executor paying the freight. Look, Mrs. Nicholson, you and I made a bargain, and I have every intention of keeping it. And I didn't make any kind of a deal with your Miss Bethke. I just told her that I'd call her when we got to Santa Fe. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I misjudged you. Well, that's all right. I guess I can't blame you. Now, how about it? All right. Get going. Speed trap in that time we just passed through. What's the matter, Sheriff? You fellas hunting jackrabbits? Never mind about that. Get out of there, both of you. Now, who are you? My name's Emmett. John Emmett. Your name Nicholson? Yes, it is. We got a call from the Los Angeles police to pick up a Mrs. Nicholson in a tan convertible. The description checks. What is the license? But I don't understand what... Take a look in the car, bud. Right. Have you any idea what this is all about? No, I haven't. I... What's she wanted for, officer? She's wanted for questioning in Los Angeles about a murder. Murder? No weapon, Sheriff. All right. Get back in the car, both of you. You better drive, mister. 
Turn around and head back to town slow. Yeah, a real sweet, innocent girl. I don't understand what they're talking about. Bud, put him in. Oh, please, there must be some mistake. There is no mistake, Mrs. Nicholson. But I... But I didn't do anything. I didn't kill anybody. It must All right, now take it easy on the girl. I didn't kill anybody. Mrs. Nicholson, I didn't... you gotta stop it now. Yeah. Maybe this will hold you. You all right, bud? Yeah, I guess so. Get back to the car. Look, you do that again, so help me, I'll belt you one. <laughs> all right, come on. Let's get out of here. Here, hold it. All right. Here, you keep these keys. I don't know anything they're oh, talking shut about. Up. Now, Mrs. Nicholson, just fill me in. I don't understand. I... You know, this chain gang routine wasn't part of the bargain. Country cops don't just use their guns on people unless they get a good reason. The man said questioning about a murder. I don't understand. I, I don't know what they were talking Mrs. about. Mrs. Nicholson, I'm not going to ask you again. Now, fill me in. You know, there's something awful funny about all this. You in such a hurry, then the nurse, now the police. They're looking for you, and they're not kidding. Well, I know it sounds strange, but... And I don't blame you for not believing me, but I don't know anything about a murder. Well, what do you know? <laughs> you know, maybe we should just give ourselves up. No. No, you don't have to come with me. But I must get to Santa Fe. Santa Fe. Even without these, you wouldn't have a chance. They probably got a roadblock at every intersection. I don't know how lucky we are to be alive. Yes, I know. You see, Berlin was my home during the war. Are you German? Well, then how come you don't have an accent? Now I want the truth. My family brought me here when I was very young. But my father still had holdings in Germany. We went back there to dispose of them. The war broke out. We were caught. That's the truth. Well, where's your family now? I'm the only member of my family still alive. I've kept things to myself for so long. I have to tell someone. <laughs> All right. Tell me about it. When did it start? Well, nearly three months ago, I... I got word that my brother Kurt was still alive. He was being held prisoner in East Germany. I flew to Berlin to see if I could help him. I went to the American authorities and they did everything they could for me. But it was through the underground that I made contact. They sent me a message. They told me to go to a certain apartment building, take an apartment, stay close to him. Not to talk to anyone. A week passed. 
I don't think I slept an hour, not wanting to miss a messenger if one got through to me. But nothing happened. There was nothing I could do. I had to wait. Because some do escape. There's no one here. Kurt, is he with you? When will he be here? He won't be here, Anna. He didn't even get out of Stettin. But he is alive. He's all right. He was caught. I got away, Anna, but he was caught. But he's alive. Anna. You must know that when we are caught, we disappear permanently. You've always known this time could come. I've known. For years, I thought him dead. Can help uh, an American citizen now. I will go to the council tomorrow morning and see what I can do. No, Anna. There is a better way. Do you remember Dr. Reinhard Kissel? Uncle Reinhard. Of course I remember him. Well, since the war, Dr. Kissel has been a captive scientist working for the Russians at the University of Stettin. Kurt was working with him. Over a month ago, Dr. Kissel escaped and is now safe in America. Oh, I'm so glad. But if he is already in America, what can I do? In his haste to get away, he was unable to take with him a transcript that he had made of all his Russian research. Now, there is no one in the world knows more about the guided missiles than he does, but one can carry only so much in the head. So Dr. Kissel needed this transcript. So he got word to Kurt as to its exact location, and Kurt found it and gave it to me before he was caught. You have it here now? Yeah. Oh, we must get it into safe hands immediately. Kurt said to give it to you. Steel mirror. This is the transcript. Yeah. The military uses them. Do you see these engravings? Look closely. It's to us ordinary scratches, but under magnification, it is the key to the most recent Soviet advancement in the field of the intercontinental missile. Well, why give it to me? We must take it to the proper authorities, and they will see that Dr. Kissel gets it. The Soviet espionage is very active in Berlin. And I cannot run the risk of letting that transcript fall into the wrong hands. Then I will take it to the American consul. No, Anna. Your brother Kurt was killed trying to get that transcript to Dr. Kissel. Now, you must follow his instructions. There may be traitors even in the consulates. We cannot trust anyone. You take it with you to America. But Anna. It is ordinary equipment for a lady's handbag. But America is big. Where will I look for him? Where will I find him? I cannot stay longer. You know people that you can contact, and you want to help. You will find him, Anna.
Kurt was my dear friend. And I'm very sorry for him. And for you. Goodbye, Anna. Auf Wiedersehen, Karl. I will do my best. Thank you. You, uh, you've been in Los Angeles for three months? Yes. Well, then why all the hurry now? Well, when I came back, I was ill for quite a few weeks. The doctors called it by big names, but it, but it was simple shock. They wanted to put me in a sanitarium. But there's a, a Dr. Simmons who lives in my apartment building, and he wouldn't let them. Without him, I would have certainly lost my mind. And the, uh, the nurse, Miss Bethke, she works for Dr. Simmons. Dr. Simmons means well. He watches over me night and day. I haven't told him any of this. You're the only one who knows about the steel mirror. Uh, where's the mirror now? It's in my bag. But you still haven't told me why all the rush now. You see, I've been trying to locate Dr. Kissel, and I could get no leads. Finally, I decided to phone Central Intelligence in Washington. I told them my story, and they got quite excited about it. They told me they would send a man to see me. You know, perhaps that has something to do with our trouble back on the highway. No, I, I don't think so. Their man was to contact me. But yesterday, I read in the papers that Dr. Kissel was at a university in Santa Fe. I left immediately. Of course, you know the rest. <coughs> You know, this is the screwiest story I ever heard. If I read it, I wouldn't believe it. But you do believe me. You will help me. I haven't much choice, have I? All right, the next thing to do is get in the car. What about the police? If there's a roadblock, we can't get very far. Well, Ann, you just relax. Maybe I'll think of something. I'm glad you called me in. Sorry I got you into so much trouble, Mr. Emmett. John. You ready? You know, for the first time in a long while, I don't feel all alone. Howdy. Can I help you? Yeah, my uh, my wife and I like a room. We uh, we probably won't spend the night just long enough to freshen up. We've been trying to make time driving east, and the desert hit us kind of hard. Mm, it does, most folks. Will you come in and sign the register, please? Ah, uh, sure. Say, uh, you got anybody here who can take my bags out of the car? Well, we got a handyman. I guess he can help you. Can 
Did they do anything else for you? Uh, yes. Is there, uh, is there any way you could get us on the deed? Sandwiches and a cup of coffee would be fine. Yeah, I guess so. Good. And uh, could you get us a newspaper? I'll see if it's come in yet. Anything else? Uh, yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, I, uh, I lost the key to this lock. I wonder if you could bring me a hacksaw. Yeah, I got everything out in my workhouse. I'll take it out to the shop and I'll see if just, I can get it. Just, uh, fix. just do what I ask you to, huh? Sure anything you say, mister. Here you are. You might make yourself a little tip. I wonder what's taking him so long. Oh, we're playing for Senator Zan. Maybe they got suspicious and decided to check with the sheriff. And maybe your picture's in the morning paper. But I told you I didn't do I know, but it's percentages. Let's just hope that we're lucky. Okay, now. Okay, let's go. Don't forget to turn on that shower. Come on in. I'm in here. I got everything from Hacksaw to coffee. Head down to the store for the paper. All right. What do I owe you? 185. Okay, I'll tell you what. How much was that bill I gave you? Five bucks. Okay, you keep the change. Hey, how about that? Thanks. Thanks a lot, mister. All right, boy, you earned it. Yeah. Go over there. Well, we got a nice couple of hours work for this. Let's hope it lasts. Central Intelligence Agent murdered. Robert Stanton, special agent for the Central Intelligence Agency, found shot. Police are looking for a woman believed to have been the last person to see him alive. Well, that's why they were looking for me. Yeah, yeah, that's the general idea. Well, no wonder those sheriffs were looking for us. Why didn't you tell me anything about this? Well, I didn't know. I, I don't know where Robert Stanton Oh, so you said. But this has nothing to do with me. It hasn't, eh? What time was your appointment with Stanton? I told you I didn't have an appointment. He was to contact me. All right, all right, all right. Where did you live in L.A.? Paxton Arms Apartments. The Paxton Arms Apartments. Stan was found killed in the car to the Paxton Arms at approximately 4.05 p.m. I wasn't there. You weren't, huh? No. Ah, uh, Central Intelligence Agent. <laughs> I knew there was something screwy about this all along, but I don't happen to have anything like the imagination that you have. Now, why did you do something new? Why did you just make up a whole fresh story? Go ahead, go ahead, start from scratch. I wish I could tear these handcuffs off. Oh, of course you do. You got to get to Santa Fe and the mysterious Dr. Reinhard Kissel. You know, you know, Madam X, maybe that nurse wasn't kidding. Maybe you did suffer a real deep nervous breakdown. But there is a Dr. Kissel. Why don't you just tell me the truth? I have told you the truth. What are you doing? What am I doing? I'm just trying to find something out of all this mess that makes a little... These belong to those cops. Free to go, Mr. Emmett. No. No, I'm not free. I won't be free until I find Stanton's murderer. You know what you and I are going to do? We're going to give ourselves up. It's a miracle we ever got this far. Well, I can't. I must go on. Look, why can't I make you understand? If you are innocent, if there is any kind of explanation, all we've got to do is go to the proper authorities and straighten the whole blessed thing out. You say it's two hours to Santa Fe. Yes. You stay here and wait until I come back. No. Look, whether it's right or wrong. My brother and his friend, Carl, were killed trying to get this message to Dr. Kissel. I gave them my word that I would. I must try. Here, read this. Dean William Brand of Fairmont University ends mystery. After many months of secrecy as to the whereabouts of Dr. Reinhard Kissel, Dr. Kissel will proceed immediately to Santa Fe, New Mexico, where he will assume a post in the Physics Department of Fairmont University, Dean William Brand announced earlier today. After I see Dr. Kissel, I'll do anything you want. I'll go to the police, anything. I promise you. 
Okay, baby. Santa Fe and Kissel it is. If we ever get that far. Your secretary said we'd find you in. This is Mrs. Nicholson. Oh, of course. She called me about you. Come in, please. How do you do, Dean? Won't you sit down? Thank you. Now, uh, who is the gentleman you're looking for? It's a Dr. Reinhard Kissel. He's a very good friend of mine, and it's very important that I see him. Reinhard Kissel? Strange, I, I don't recall the name. Is he attending our summer session? Oh, no. No, he's not a student. He's a teacher. At Fairmont? Yes. Oh, my dear, there's been some mistake. I'm only a summer replacement, but I'm sure I would have heard of him. But he must be. He's got to be. Well, now, uh, you don't believe me? Well, it isn't that I don't believe you, but he just has to be here. Anne. Yes, Anne. but I've counted so much Anne, of Anne, this is no time to get excited. Just show the dean the clip. Oh, yeah. We have no such person on our staff, and we're not expecting one. It's really rather baffling, isn't it? I, I, I can't account for such an error. Well, how can you say it's an error? I've just told you. I'm sure newspapers sometimes make such mistakes. Well, you don't understand. I've waited so long. I've, I've tried so hard to find him. I, I'm just so tired. I, I know nothing about your difficulty, but I may say that perhaps this whole business has become exaggerated in your own mind. Exaggerated in my mind? And. Dean Brandt is only trying to help. I merely observe that you seem to be under great strain. I'm sorry, I... Better get a hold of yourself, now. Well, I understood more about her condition. Well, that's rather a long story, Dean. Perhaps there are medical complications. In that case, you should call a physician. That's already been taken care of. Our nurse is... Uh, Ann, I think we'd better be going now. Please forgive me, Dean. Of course, of course. Now, don't look back. Our friend the Dean is watching out the window. paper and call the police. Well, same car, same license place. I can't understand why we haven't seen more cops. Well, let's hope our luck holds as far as the Estes Hotel, huh? Is that where you're taking me? Yeah. Yeah, you need that nurse. Check on Miss Bethke. Uh, that won't be necessary, Mr. Emmett. I've been waiting. Well, you're a very efficient nurse. Dr. Simmons' orders. Is Dr. Simmons here? Yes. You look very tired, Mrs. Nicholson. We have some fresh things upstairs. We brought them with us. Thank you. She, uh, she's had quite a trip. Dr. Simmons asked me to give you this for your trouble. Money, huh? Thank you just the same. Dr. Simmons is waiting. He asked me to have you leave as soon as you brought her here. Well, he wants to avoid unnecessary complications. 
Of course. I understand. It would have been better if we had said goodbye in the car. Well, I, uh, I don't know when I've had so much fun. Goodbye. John. I'll never forget you. Yeah. As a nurse, you must realize that it is a doctor's duty to protect his patient. Why, yes, doctor, of course. Now, severe cases sometimes call for severe treatment. I've made arrangements to take Mrs. Nicholson to Young's Valley Sanatorium near here. It's a mental hospital for cases which must be isolated for long-time treatment. They can't touch her there. Well, have you told her? No, not yet. Oh, by the way, I need you to sign this paper. Go ahead, read it. I need a witness to Mrs. Nicholson's condition. As you know, she has no family. I'll be happy to go along and stay with her if you think it will help. That won't be necessary. Staff people will be here first thing in the morning and you can leave for Los Angeles on the 10 o'clock plane. <laughs> My office has been running itself long enough. Do what you can to keep what patients I have left happy. If all goes well, I'll be back tomorrow afternoon. Very well. Has she ever mentioned a man named Kissel to you? Kissel? No, but I haven't had much time to talk to her. Well, she says he's the reason she came to Santa Fe. Kissel, Kissel. No, anything else? Well, only that she read about his being here in a newspaper and she's been unable to find him. Well, it's possible that this man, Mr. Kissel, doesn't even exist. What makes you say that, Dr. Simmons? Mrs. Nicholson. Dr. Kissel does exist and I did read that he was here. Why, of course, Mrs. Nicholson. It wasn't that I doubted you, it was just that... Now, look, why don't you go back to bed Please, and... Please, Dr. Simmons, don't talk to me in that condescending tone. I know what I read. All right. Maybe we can help you. Uh, why didn't you tell me about him before? Now, you know I've been very close to you for the last three months, and you've never even mentioned his name. Well, I couldn't. I haven't discussed this with anyone until now. Wait a minute. I'll get you the clipping. Give in to her on everything. We must avoid an emotional crisis. Yes, sir. Gone. But I did have it. Well, I know now. I gave it to Dean Brandt. Dean Brandt? Yes, he's the dean at Fairmont University. Dr. Kissel was supposed to be teaching there. At least that's what the clipping said. Now, Mrs. Nicholson, I must be firm about this. I can't allow you to be more involved in this strange situation. You must rest now and then no, tomorrow. First, I want the clipping. I gave it to the dean and he didn't give it back. He said he had never heard of Dr. Kissel. All right, I'll tell you what I'll do. He may still be at the university. Why don't I call him? No, he's at home. Uh, Oak Street. William Brandt on Oak Street. Operator, get me Dean William Brandt on Oak Street. That's right. Uh, may I speak to Dean William Brandt, please? Oh, how do you do, Dean Brandt? <laughs> This may strike you as a rather odd phone call. My name is Simmons, Dr. Frederick Simmons of Los Angeles. It's in connection with a patient of mine, Mrs. Ann Nicholson. She called on you earlier this afternoon. Yes, she was here all right. She was inquiring regarding a Dr. Kissel. Unfortunately, I had never heard of him. Uh, tell me, Dean Brandt, do you still have the newspaper clipping she gave you concerning this man Kissel? But she never showed me a clipping. Oh, I see. Uh, would you mind repeating that, please? never showed me a clipping. I did give him a clipping. Here, let me... Just a moment, Dean Brandt. Mrs. Nicholson, you're in enough trouble as things stand now. Please be quiet. Thank you, Dean Brandt. 
Uh, no, 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 don't trouble yourself. Uh, forgive me for this inconvenience. Just forget the whole matter. Thank you again. Goodbye. I don't understand. Do you think I could have imagined all this? Do you? Well, you have been under a dreadful strain. Mrs. Nicholson, undoubtedly some confusions have developed in your mind. But there is nothing wrong with you that a few weeks of quiet won't cure. Now, I've made arrangements at a rest home oh, near... but there was Mrs. Clippy. Nicholson, I haven't even asked you about Stanton, the Central Intelligence man. Now, the police will. They'll ask lots of questions. Your mental condition is the least of your problems. Yes, but I don't know anything about Stanton, and I can explain about... You do what's ever best, Arthur. Now, that's much better. Now, once you're feeling better and everything is all straightened out, you'll come back to Los Angeles. It won't take long. All right, Doctor. Miss Bethke, see to it that Mrs. Nicholson goes to bed at once. Hello? Is that you, Mr. Emmett? Yes. Yes, I, uh, I'm John Emmett. What's the matter? Is something wrong? Oh, no, but you call for a reservation, and it's getting very late. I was beginning to wonder if anything had happened. <laughs> no, no, the bus was late. Say, you know, it's nice to have somebody who's concerned about you. <laughs> well, I'm Mrs. Pruitt, and we're glad to have you here. I think you'll like it, too. Well, I hope so. You know, the feature running very good this year. The fellow this morning got his catch within an hour. Really? Well, I'll try my luck tomorrow. All right, come on. I'll show you the way. But I tell you, I've checked everything. Her clothes, her purse, everything. Yes, Dean Brandt, I looked some more, but it would help if I knew what we were looking for. No, I'm not trying to be funny. Yes, she's agreed to go of her own accord. The attendants from Young's Valley Sanatorium will be here in the morning. No, she's out. She'll sleep till noon tomorrow. All right. I'll keep looking. Good night. About ready? The car will be here in a minute. I'm hurrying as fast as I can. It's, it's just that I feel so dizzy. That that sedative Miss Bethke gave me. Here, take one of these. It'll clear your head up and make you feel better. Thank you. Here they are now. Please hurry. Uh, she's inside, dressing. You have the papers? Oh, yes, here they are. Mm-hmm. Seem to be in order. Isolation patient, serious mental breakdown. Be held and notified. No contact outside the hospital. That's correct. Uh, would you boys care for a cup of coffee? Thank you. Thank you. I was fishing. I just got here. Yes, I know. 
After ten, a little late in the day for a fisherman, isn't it? Well, I had other things in my mind. Oh? Now it's my turn. Who are you? United States government. This is to certify that Edward Manning Kirkpatrick is an authorized representative of the Central Intelligence Agent. CIA. You are John Emmett. That's right. Sit down, Mr. Emmett. Sit down. You ought to be tired. You didn't get much sleep the past few nights, which means neither did I. I don't get it. You met a Mrs. Ann Nicholson. I have the exact hour at a garage in Jepson, California. You dropped her last night at the Estes Hotel in Santa Fe at 6.03 p.m. That's right. Why? Oh. Okay, she wanted somebody to help drive through to Santa Fe. So she gave me a lift. Well, she was in a hurry. I can understand that. She left a dead man behind her in L.A. I know. We, uh... We read about that in the newspaper. And believe me, she was just as surprised as I was. Maybe. But why the race to Santa Fe? Well, she had to see somebody there. Uh, Dr. Kissel, Dr. Reinhard Kissel. He was supposed to be at Fairmont University. She'd been in touch with him? No, no. She had a clipping she cut out of the paper. But uh, we got there and he wasn't there. Nobody ever heard of the guy. Not even Dean William Brand? Uh, especially Dean William Brand. All right, that takes us to the Estes Hotel in Santa Fe. That was quite a vacation trip. Yeah. You know, you can't relax with things on your mind. Like to tell me anything else, Mr. Emmett? Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go back with you. I'll testify. I'll do anything I can to help Mrs. Nicholson. Now, what do you want out of me? She seems pretty well taken care of at the moment, so sit down, Mr. Emmett. This newspaper tripping about Fairmont University interests me. Reinhard Kissel couldn't have been there. He's working for the government at Numa. No. The guided missile project. Are uh, you, uh... You said something about Mrs. Nicholson being taken care of. What did you mean? By this time, safe and sound in a quiet room in a rest home for the mentally ill. You know what? This Dr. Simmons is a very efficient man. No one's going to ask a woman to stand trial when papers have been signed committing her to an institution. She's, she's as sane as you are. You got a license to practice? It's an interesting case, Emmett. Stanton checked through our office before he went to call on Mrs. Nicholson. So I was able to pick up the trail early. Routine. Of course, I had to pry the sheriff and his deputies off your back. They were as sore as old goats. <laughs> I wonder why we weren't picked up. CIA priority. I had to find out where you and Mrs. Nicholson would lead me. She's out of circulation, so here I am. You're awfully restless. Where are you going? Where am I going? I'm going back to Santa Fe and talk to this Dr. Simmons. Stay where you are, Mr. Emmett. There's nothing you can do at the moment. Keep this number in Santa Fe. Call me if you need me. see you come in here. Only Mrs. Pruitt, she unlocked the door for me. I... I told her I was your wife. Well, that worked once before, didn't it? For the handcuffs. Well, what'd you get? Well, I think Emmett has got no idea what he's mixed up in. And I think you're right about Mrs. Nicholson. She's brought something from Germany that she wants to deliver to Dr. Kissel. That figures he helped develop the original V2. Could be plans for the intercontinental ballistics missile. ICBM. You know, these things can travel thousands of miles an hour across the Atlantic in a few minutes. Minutes, Jim. Scares you to think about it. Yeah, there's a lot at stake. It's good to have the FBI with us, Jim. We couldn't let the CIA cop such a big plum, could we? Now, don't worry, Ann. We'll work this thing out. We've been through a lot worse than this before, believe me. And the first thing for us to do is to call Dr. Simmons. Why? I don't want to ever see him again. Oh, I think you're wrong, Ann. After all, he doesn't know where you are. He's bound to be worried. He might even ask the police to pick you up. 
He doesn't know that Dean Brand was lying. Unless. Come on. Mrs. Pruitt, I wonder if I could use your phone? Oh, yes, of course. What number? The, uh, the Estes Hotel in Santa Fe. I'll get it for you right away. Okay, Mr. Emmett. Thank you. Hello? I believe you have a Dr. Simmons registered there. I'd like to talk with him, please. Hello? Uh, hello, this is John Emmett. You don't know me, but I'm the man who drove up to Santa Fe with your patient, Mrs. Nicholson. Oh, yes, Mr. Emmett. I didn't have a chance to thank you. I know you must be worried, and I just wanted to tell you that Mrs. Nicholson is right here with me. Oh, I must say I'm relieved. I won't try to explain, but it's terribly important that you... This, uh, this may be more important than anything else. Mrs. Nicholson was not lying about that clipping or about Dean Brand. I was there. I saw it. I saw him read it. Sir, I suggest you bring Mrs. Nicholson back here at once. I have been Mrs. Nicholson's doctor for some time, Mr. Emmett. I think I know what's best for her. Well, that may well be, but, but uh, having her committed... Doctor, that is all wrong. This conversation has only one point, Mr. Emmett. Will you bring Mrs. Nicholson back here at once? You know, it might be a good idea for Mrs. Nicholson to see another doctor, just uh, for a consultation. Now listen to me, Emmett, and listen carefully. I don't know what you're after, but I'm quite sure you don't realize the danger of your position. I can have you arrested. Oh? For what? For kidnapping. Emmett? I hear you. If you interfere in any way, I'll prefer charges against you. I'll be able to trace this call. You know this country well, don't you? Every foot of it. If you have any difficulties, I won't be interested. I'm only interested in results. Get rid of him. I don't care how, but get rid of him. Should be ready. Black coffee, courage, same thing. Say, uh, what'd you do with your car? Well, I left it behind the lodge. You should have seen me coming down the fire escape. Fire escape? You want to see my skin and shin? Uh, yeah, I'd like to. <laughs> well, you, uh, you heard what the man said. What can he do to us, John? On the kidnap charge? Nothing. Unless you claim you're being held against your will. That's funny. I should be charged with kidnapping you. You know, Ann, I've had to think in kind of a hurry here, but I feel that uh, the steel mirror is more important than even you suspect. Before I came in here, I had a visit from the CIA. What did they want? Oh, they were just checking up on a few things. They, uh, they knew that Dr. Simmons was trying to have you committed. And I found out why we didn't see Dr. Kissel at the university. Why? Because he's at a place called uh, Numa. Well, where's that? It's not far from here. It's a government project, a guided missile installation. I figure that uh, these characters know that you're carrying the, uh, the transcript, but they don't know how. And one thing is sure, we know that they're trying to have you committed. Do you want to take a ride? To Numa? There's something else I've been thinking about, too. What is it, John? I've been thinking of asking you to marry me. Marry you? Yes, I, uh, I can't tell you all the reasons, but one of them is that last night, even tired as I was, uh, I couldn't sleep a wink for thinking and worrying about you. You think if you marry me, Dr. Simmons can't take me away? Is that it? Well, that is a reason, but... The main thing is I love you, Anne. I really do. There's no way to New Mexico, and, and if we're married, why, there'll be no arresting me, and they can't take you away without my signature. Oh, John. I, uh, don't have the time right now to tell you very much, except that I won't be committing bigamy. And after we deliver the mirror, if you wish, why, you can claim that you marry me under duress and get on an omen. 
I don't look very nice to be married. Well, Mrs. Emmett, be a scrapbook. We won't need a scrapbook, John. All right. I, uh, I better keep it handy anyway. It's a funny little ceremony. Yeah, quick and legal. Well, not quite legal. You, you didn't kiss me. Right out here? Why not? Hey, we, uh, we got witnesses. <laughs> by three this afternoon. Any luck? We've got lots of luck, John. You understand about Numa, don't you? Yes, you said it was a guided missile installation. All seems to fit in with your Dr. Kissel, from what you tell me. He's one of the world's great physicists. My family was very proud to have him as a friend. First traffic today. If I could get word to Dr. Kissel, I know he'd see us. If we see. You know, Numa is top security. And what are our credentials? Unless we can find that CIA man, Kirkpatrick. When we see him, we'll be free to do as we wish. Yeah, but lawyers can tear up a marriage certificate. Just like that, like an out-of-date newspaper. Won't I have anything to say about that? You know, you haven't had time. You haven't any peace of mind. John, look out! Sorry about this. Flat tire. Could you give me some help? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be glad to. You stay here, Ann. I'll be right back. All right. Jim. Sure flat, all right. It's this jack. I don't know how to place the thing. You don't, huh? No pick to that. you cut on out. But I thought my friend and I will take over. Oh, well, I wouldn't want to impose on you. Oh, we got all the time in the world. Oh, that's very kind. Here. He's probably better at it than I am. Well, that was a break. those guys really wanted. They didn't stop just to change a tire. We're just lucky. Numa by three o'clock, remember? Sergeant, I wonder if you could tell me where I could find you a phone. You have a pass, sir. Uh, no, I don't, but if I can get the phone... What's real... your name, sir? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. John Emmett. Uh, we'd like to see Dr. Kissel, Dr. Reinhardt Kissel. My wife is a very close personal friend of his. Do you have some identification, sir? Yeah, I have my, uh, my business cards and driver's license, that sort of thing. The 
Sergeant, there's some way you can handle this without all his usual... Yes, sir. Uh, See that Mr. and Mrs. Emmett get to room 106. Oh, very kind of you. Order, sir. This way, sir. I've been waiting. Everything in order, Mr. Kirkpatrick? Yes, thanks. Well, we uh, we had a little delay on the way. Flat tire, I understand. How'd you know that? You're here to see Dr. Kissel, Mrs. Nicholson. Uh, Nicholson. The meeting will be arranged in a moment. Would you ask the gentleman in there to step in with us, please? Yes, sir. Dr. Simmons. Mrs. Nicholson, I don't know what this is all about. I knew how worried Dr. Simmons must be, so I asked him to meet us here. Mrs. Nicholson, why did they bring you here? Your patient requested an interview with one of the scientists, a Dr. Kissel. Who? Oh, yes, the individual involved in Mrs. Nicholson's hallucinations. There is a Dr. Kissel, and I've known him all my life. Kissel's real enough. He's but, here. That is beside the point. Mrs. Nicholson is in a serious nervous condition. She ran away. Then with the interference of this man. You know him? It can only be John Emmett, and I'm preferring charges against him. Then you should know that your patient and Mr. Emmett are married. I don't believe it. You should remember little things like that, Mrs. Emmett. Have you got the marriage certificate, Mr. Emmett? Yes. Married today at high noon, legal and proper. You forced her into this. I did it of my own free will. I consider this taking advantage when she's in her present condition. It is an invasion of her rights and mine. You seem to be in more of a condition than Mrs. Emmett. May I see Dr. Kissel now, please? Everything's arranged. This way, please. You too, Doctor. Dr. Kissel's on his way. Is it possible I could see Dr. Kissel alone? I'm sorry, Mrs. Emmett. Mr. Kirkpatrick? Yes? This is Dr. Reinhard Kissel. Dr. Kissel? They told me someone wanted to see me. You are the one? Dr. Kissel, don't you remember me? Anna? Anna Hempel. But that was a long time ago. Anna, after all these years, such changes, you have changed some, but I would remember you any place. But I was always old to you, the same old cane, the limb. But you are just now grown up, and so beautiful, Anna. May Anna and I go somewhere and talk? I'm sorry, Dr. Kissel, this is the arrangement. I hear so little from my old friends. Your brother Kurt, I heard that he was caught. He was brave and good. I owe him my life. Yes, I was in Berlin when I heard. Word was brought to me that he was dead. Word was brought to you? By whom, Anna? By another friend of yours. Someone that you worked with, with Kurt. Karl Plesser? He was shot and killed as he was leaving my apartment. How could they? Did he leave something with you for me? Yes. That is why I'm here. I have your transcript. He did get my message then. I thought it was lost forever. I promised him that I wouldn't tell anyone until I found you. Glad. Very glad to be here. Where is my transcript, Anna? Where?
Here. Here it is, Doctor. It was transferred to microfilm. This represents so much work. I'm proud of you, Anna. And so grateful. All right, Mrs. Emmett. Dr. Kissel, you have an important assignment ahead of you? Yes. I shall have a free hand in this. I must get started. You may go now. Thanks. And goodbye, Anna. Mr. Kirkpatrick, could I see you alone, please? Yes, I guess so. You step in a moment, please. Stay with these two men, if you will. Could John come with me, please? Sure. Come on. That man is not Dr. Kissel. Are you sure? Positive. The real Dr. Kissel engraved the back of this mirror. You didn't even recognize it. I'll keep this, Mrs. Emmett. You've delivered it. This is Special FBI Agent Anderson. I think you've met Mr. and Mrs. Emmett. How do you do? How are you? Fine. Same thing is beginning to add up here. Yeah. For us, too, Mr. Emmett. For us, too. But if he knew about everything else, why didn't he know about the steel mirror? Well, we all knew that you were bringing something to Kissel. Formulas, plans, but no one knew how. I haven't got time to go into details now. I'm going to ask you to do us a very big favor. Sure. What is it you want, Mr. Kirkpatrick? Get me four three four seven one. Get off the telephone. But I had to reach you. I'm here. Did the woman see Kissel? Yes. But, but things went well, much better than we expected. Things went very well. Stop gibbering. Did she recognize him? I don't think so. You don't think? But plans belonging to Kissel and Statine. She delivered them. And she did have his plans. I knew that was why she wanted to see him. It had to be. She was sick for three months. You were with her night and day. One purpose, to find out if she brought those plans with her from Germany. You, a psychiatrist. Now, look, I... We turned that fool Kissel to jelly before he died, and he didn't tell. Then this hysterical woman. What are they going to do now? Tonight, they leave for Los Angeles. I'll go with them. In Los Angeles, she'll be involved in questioning. The woman will not leave Santa Fe. But this will give you time Fool. here. She's the only living person who can identify her, Dr. Kissel. Is she coming here before she leaves for the airport? Yes, that's the plan. The woman's not to leave the hotel. Understand? Harry, our young man with the gun, has run out on us. You can double for him. I, I can't get away with that. Now you know that. You know that. Yes. Come in. It will only be a minute. There's no hurry. I'm just waiting for plane time. By the way, did Mr. Kirkpatrick say what time it was leaving? Eight o'clock. I may not come with you. A friend of mine who was going to drive my car back from the airport won't make it. Well, I'll tell Mr. Kirkpatrick. Would you excuse me? I had hoped to see you alone for a moment. Really, all I wanted to say was I was very wrong. But my motives were for your best interests. At least, that's what I thought. I understand, Doctor. Thank you. See you later.
I'm okay. Lucky for us. What a fool he was. What a fool I was. You can't calculate every move, and we did get results. Well, that's it. Well, what happened? What's it all about? Lots of little pieces to the story, but simple at the core. This alleged Reinhard Kissel is a Soviet scientist. Complete Soviet espionage setup. They were doing great until you came back to this country determined to find Kissel. Well, who put that article in the paper? We did. We didn't know for sure about Brandt, but we figured you would complicate things for him. That is, unless you were one of them. We were suspicious enough of this phony Kissel to keep him under constant surveillance. Remember the character with the flat tire? Yeah. He was the hired man with a gun. He killed Stanton. We got the confession. Routine from now on, except that until now, we only had circumstantial evidence against either Simmons or Brandt. No sense in waiting any longer. The boys will clean up around here. We can stop back for Los Angeles. Well, if you don't mind, sir, my husband has a month's vacation. Yeah, three weeks. You don't mind, do you? Go ahead. John! 